Good evening, our dear friends from everywhere. This is uh, a series of uh, interesting cases in coronary intervention that I will be presenting on uh, our channel, Cardiology Education Channel. So this is a case uh, presenting an unexpected complication during uh, emergency primary PCI. So this is uh, in 2020, in August, uh, ER at University Hospital. This is a 75 years old gentleman, hypertensive presented by typical chest pain of four hours duration, blood pressure 110, 70, heart rate 110, chest, heart, vesicular breathing, cardiac examination, S1, S2, and S4. He was admitted to the CCU. The ECG showed diffuse ST segment depression in all the chest leads with deep T wave inversion. And a bedside echo showed an ejection fraction of 35%, severe hypokinesia of the anterior and the lateral wall. The troponin was elevated 2,700 and the CKMB was elevated 124. Other labs were normal. Two hours later, he had already been on dual antiplatelet therapy and oxaparin statins and proton pump. The patient still is having complaining of agonizing chest pain despite morphia and oxygen. Nitrates infusion exceeded to the maximum tolerated blood pressure 90 over 60. The metoprolol 100 milligrams reduced the heart rate to 85. So coronary angiography was decided at the first two hours of admission as a case of high risk non-ST myocardial infarction. So it's nearly 2 a.m. now. This is the coronary angio, long left main, giving a circumflex and an LED, circumflex giving a large OM branch. The LEG shows approximate stenosis at the bifurcation of the first diagonal branch. This is a right transradial approach. As you can see, the lesion in the proximal LED, it's a bit hazy lesion. So probably it may be thrombus containing lesion. And this is the right coronary atherosclerotic vessel with no significant lesions. So it looks simple. He's an old gentleman, transradial approach, LED stenosis, guiding catheter, six French wire, LED diagonal, direct stent. This was the plan. Go home. So here's an EBU, six French, 3.5, guiding catheter wiring the LED and the diagonal branch by floppy wires, PTCA by a 275 by 20 millimeter balloon. It was difficult to pass the stent, so we used body wires. The wire in the diagonal branch was used as a body wire in the LED. It was difficult to pass the stent as you can see. Okay, now the stent has passed to the LED, properly positioned. The body wire was withdrawn. The stent was inflated and you can see the perforation in the mid segment of the LED. This is the previous angio. The stent inflation in the lateral view and in the cranial view, you can see the perforation in the distal part of the stent, free flow to the pericardium. So theory is when you know everything but nothing works, practice when everything works but no one knows why. In our lab, theory and practice are combined. So don't panic. This is life. We did an intermittent balloon inflation for 20 minutes, but as you can see, the perforation is not sealing. This is a very big perforation, and there is free flow to the pericardium. As you can see with the dye injection, it flows freely to the pericardium. 
40 minutes after balloon inflation, wow, the perforation is still the same. Until that point, the patient is hemodynamically stable, by the way. So we need to change the plan. Let's pass a papyrus stent. So the stent, the graft stent was immediately on the wire and it was passed as you can see and adequately positioned to cover, but the patient arrested. Suddenly the patient arrested and tamponaded in 15 seconds. CPR was done, recardiosynthesis immediately done during CPR and 125 cc's of blood were taken and the graft stent of course was inflated adequately and the patient was saved and taken from the cath lab. As you can see, this is the final injection. In hospital course, the patient developed atrial fibrillation on the next day. DC restored the sinus rhythm. The pigtail catheter was removed after 48 hours. He was discharged after four days from the non-STEMI admission. Echo on the charge showed the on injection fraction of 40%. Segmental wall motion abnormalities in the LED territory and no pericardial diffusion. Out of hospital course, he was kept on triple antiplatelet for one week. Aspirin was dropped out after one week and he was continued on apixaban and clopidogrel for one month. And then apixaban was stopped and aspirin resumed with clopidogrel for one year. And after one year, aspirin was continued indefinitely alone. Arnie and dapagliflozin were started on discharge because his ejection fraction was 40%. Follow up now for nearly one and a half years, 18 months follow up, the patient is fully compensated chest pain free doing his regular activities. His last echo one month ago showed an ejection fraction of 50% and no segmental wall motion abnormalities. Thank you.